Hi, welcome to HowToStats.com. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how uh, performing an analysis of variance on ratio variables uh, can very seriously lead somebody astray uh, when you when people should be actually analyzing data with analysis of covariance. So where you see people use ratio scores is typically where uh, they have a dependent variable that they want to examine for mean differences, uh, let's say, but that variable that they're interested in is contaminated or it's associated with another variable uh, that they're not interested in. So they want to control for differences on that other variable, which people call a covariate. So in an analysis of covariance, we include that uh, covariate in the model. Uh, but some people don't use the analysis of covariance, and in another series of in another series of videos, I did um, residualized ANOVAs or an analysis of variance on the residuals and compared that to ANCOVA, and I showed that it gave uh, different results. Um, and in this case here, I'm going to do the same analysis, but I'm going to do uh, the analysis of variance on ratio scores, which is an al another alternative to doing ANCOVA. Now I want to say, state at the out front, in every case you should be doing uh, ANCOVA and you should never be analyzing ratio scores and you should never be analyzing uh, residual scores. I think an argument could be made that maybe residual scores uh, might be appropriate, but you'd have to convince the uh, statistical community that using a a beta that uh, using an unstandardized beta weight based on the total sample size is better than using it at the group level and nobody's advancing that argument I haven't seen it but I could understand that maybe somebody might push that argument um, uh, anyway in this case the um, the variable of interest is the same thing as I've, I've, I've been doing in a large number of series of videos now with uh, with this cranial capacity variable and the hypothesis is that male females zero and males one might differ in cranial capacity all right and in the ANCOVA the question was well okay maybe males do score higher than females on cranial capacity but they also score higher on body size so isn't it just a body size factor and that's what the analysis of covariance did is it controlled for a body size factor which I created from body height wrist and weight and the results you can look at the video series to see the results and the results found that uh, males still had st uh, statistically significantly greater cranial capacity than females Males controlling for body size, uh, but I also mentioned in the in the summary that that doesn't necessarily mean that they're smarter or that they have larger brains. Uh, uh, I suggested that um, there's research uh, that's demonstrated females to have higher neuronal density, uh, and so even though they may have smaller brains relative uh, to males, uh, that doesn't mean that they're less smart. Uh, research suggests that they're not less smart. Uh, anyway, there's still interesting data to analyze, uh, uh, to perform various analyses, and in this case, I'm going with the ratio analysis. So, what I've done through a series of other videos before this one is I've created um, Z scores rather than using my body size factor which I, I did on a principal components analysis you'll have to look at the series of videos to see if you're interested in knowing how to do that but I don't want to use this uh, in my uh, ratio because there's negative and positive values and there's even values that are close to zero this is not the kind of variable you want to divide other variables with uh, so what I've done is I've created a body size composite variable that's um, a Z score and then I create transformed it into a composite T score so now this has means of 50 and standard deviation of 10 so this is my new body size controlling variable that I'm going to use to divide uh, cranial capacity so people who score really high on this body size variable are going to get a corrected or adjusted cranial capacity um, uh, score all right and that's how people use ratios they want to control one variable uh, for the effects of another variable at least that's what they think they're doing but it's much more complicated than that and it's so complicated that I would never argue uh, to be for this to be done despite the fact that ratios the number of papers being published where people use ratios is actually quite high and disturbing so what I'm going to do is I'm going to transform my cranial capacity variable I've already actually got the information there because I did it already but um, so I'm going to call it cranial ratio 
is going to be my new variable. And I'm going to divide cranial capacity.